All right, so we are at Jerry Jarrett's home in Franklin, Tennessee, and he's gonna give us a tour of his lovely house as well as his office. It has some nice artifacts in it. If you're ready. Yeah, so we're out We're out in your backyard right now, right? For... Yes, yes, this is where I have my golf. Wow. Um, the geese and the ducks and the ducks come in um, and the I have my coffee here and I have my hobby is cooking. So I've got my little kitchen out here and uh, I enjoy that. And we know you like chicken salad, but what's your specialty? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't, <laughs> I really do make a good chicken salad, but uh, I'm a little sensitive about it since Bruce Bridger has made a living making fun of it, but that's all right. Um, you know, naturally I, I cook steaks, but everybody does. Uh, I make Carolina bog that my grandchildren just beg for every week. Wow. Um, pretty good at pasta. Uh, since I've retired, I, I Someone asked me uh, if you could answer the question quick, who is your favorite and least favorite wrestler to work with? Uh, least favorite uh, was probably Austin Lytle and uh, Jerry, Jerry Lawler was my most favorite because he was so talented and so easy to work with. Austin Idol, really, I shouldn't say that because I just had the one disagreement with him, but it was a big one and it lasted far too long. Um, he, you know, he was known for no showing here and there. Is that what it was about? Oh, well, that was part of it. He, Idol, if he had a, had more discipline as a professional, would have gone a whole lot farther in the business. Okay. And could have been a real superstar because he was very, very talented. Wow. And he had the look. He could make great interviews. Uh, he just had some personal flaws. But don't we all? Yeah. Especially in this business. Uh, this has a light on it, so we could see all right. Uh, this is where we watch the football games. And, is Tennessee uh, your favorite team? Yeah, and uh, this is uh, an area that Deborah and I discuss family business and chit chat about what the week's going to handle. And it, because it's so beautiful out there when the winter and the weather is not inducive to us being out there, this kind of brings us in and out of the house. Um, we're going through the kitchen. There's a fan that just had a quick question for you on here. Uh, if you had ended up taking over the WWE, if Vince had gone to jail, what direction would you have taken the company? Well, I, I think I would have uh, accelerated the contributions I made. Uh, when I got there, Vince preferred the big six foot ten talent, and I was able to convince him that uh, the six footers like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels could give him more action and and believable and great matches. Um, Sean Walkman, one, two, three kid, and Marty Jannetty. I talked him into letting them win the tag titles. And so I would have introduced smaller wrestlers uh, quicker. I still introduced them. But, uh, you know, it was Vince's territory. Yeah. So I would have spent as many hours as they would have let me wherever they were holding him in jail. And I would have tried to 
carry things so that they would be exactly where he wanted when he got out. Uh, but you know, you can't walk through an area and not leave your own footprints. Right. Uh, this is our little breakfast room. And Deborah and I are both real fond of Mackenzie Child, so we have an extensive collection. Uh, it's fun, uplifting, I think. Um, Someone's asking, and what about WCW? What direction would you have taken WCW? You know, probably pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, I would have, I wouldn't have spent foolishly on talent. I know that. Because my basic nature is, is to make money. Right. And, and if, you're, if you don't have a little bit of frugal mindset, it's very hard to be profitable. So. Uh, someone has a funny question. How would you make wrestling exciting again? Wow. Go back to a realism. Uh, keep it real. Allow the fan to suspend disbelief. You know, I, I see it now, and I, I get five minutes into a match, and I think, do they know how phony that looks? And, and I don't mean at all, and I don't want to seem like a grumpy old man. God's blessed me, and I am better off than I will ever deserve. But the wrestling that I love seems to be like the dinosaurs. It's just gone. Uh, I, I seldom ever see a match. I did see uh, at WrestleMania the Hunter, uh, Stephanie, Rousey, and uh, Kurt Angle. I thought that was a great match from yesterday. And someone's asking, what about Buzz Sawyer? Do you have anything to say about him? About who? Buzz Sawyer. Well, you know, poor Buzz died before he could pay me back for the car he ran off with. <laughs> 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 I know he would have paid me back. That's funny. Uh, but anyway, I, I like Buzz. He was he marched to a different drum beat. Uh, well, you want to go upstairs? Sure. Someone's asking, uh, what do you think of Impact being pretty much an independent wrestling organization now? What do I think of, I'm sorry. Of uh, TNA now being pretty much an independent organization, uh, low quality uh, shows and... Uh, the Fight Network up in Canada, but I think Dixie Carter still has uh, some stock in it, from what I understand. Wow. Well, then my advice to him is get that away from her. <laughs> uh, this is my office, and uh, I have some real estate, and I sit in here and keep the insurance current and pay the taxes. And and uh, run an ad if somebody moves out. You know, it's fun. I can get to interact with the, with the tenants from time to time. This is a big part of my life story right here. That, that home is my Florida home that Deborah and I own for 
about 12 years in Sanibel Island. And uh, we had fun raising the kids there. That's my boat, the Cloud 10. It was a 53 foot Hatteras. And uh, there it is in the backyard. Um, and this is Cumberland Place. This is where I raised the kids. We lived there 25 years, 26 years maybe. Uh, the ran on the left was the ballroom that I converted into a huge dining room when I started eating more than I danced. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where uh, Sting and Ultimate Warrior uh, we locked up and all ran on the floor. Uh, we made videos there at the farm. The Kamala video was made on a lake about 500 yards beyond, behind this house. And we put dry ice in it and made the, it bubble up look like a cauldron. What did you think of him as a character? We just interviewed him yesterday. Yeah, no, I really liked him. He was a, he was a humble general giant. And, uh, you know, I, I told him, I said, uh, we called him Sugar Bear. He wrestled with Sugar Bear Harris. And I would say, Sugar Bear, don't ever throw a punch. You throw the worst punch that's ever been in the wrestling business. Just chop. And that's, he told me one day, <laughs> nobody else told me how bad my punches were. I appreciate you telling me, because it made me a lot of money. Uh, I take the grandkids on cruises. Uh, and so here's our collection of ships. We've taken two or three on some of them, but I just have one replica. Someone's asking uh, what you think about Jerry Lawler's son passing away recently. Uh, that was that was really tragic because Brian had so much talent and uh, very intelligent, and uh, he just had a demon like you know. Unfortunately, so many have in this business, and it got the best of him. But. Uh, you know, Brian had a great career with the WWE, um, and and he was a good person. And here's what's the real tragedy: Brian was an absolute teetotaler that was like his daddy, and then never drank a beer or done any drugs for the bulk of his life, and then he got addicted. And, and that's a good lesson, that no matter how talented you are or what your station in life is, if you, if your body and metabolism is such, all it takes is trying it one time and, it, and your life's ruined. So, yeah, that was very sad. Jamie Dundee's brother-in-law says hello to you on there. He says he's watching that. Um, and speaking of Jamie Dundee, do you think there's hope for him? I've seen some videos of him. Well, you know, Jamie is another one that is very, very talented. And, and I don't know what the story is with the estrangement between him and Bill, but I wish they would patch it up. I want to tell whoever's listening if they'll pick up the phone and call him and tell him there's only one bill and he won't be around forever. Uh, that's, a, that's because that hits so close to home, what I went through with Jeff, uh, I really feel bad about Jamie and Bill. And uh, someone, you answered this in the shoot interview, but someone's asking you if that's your real Twitter that uh, you post tweets on all the time. Yes. 
So that's at Jerry Jarrett, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. And these are your fish, I guess? Oh, yeah, that's my little aquarium. And uh, it needs to be taken apart and a good cleaning. But uh, life gets hectic with grandchildren during football season. Yeah, and you mentioned that in the interview, your your one grandson might be going and playing college football eventually. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a real player, and uh, he's a junior, so he's uh, about six foot and two sixty right now. Uh, I'm hoping he ends up out of high school at about six two and two eighty, and then he'll. He'll fit the computer profile. And someone's asking on here what Memphis wrestler, what, uh, yeah, what wrestler from the Memphis territory is most overrated and most underrated? Oh. <laughs> well, that's really hard. Um, Eddie Marlin teamed with Tommy Gilbert, and that tag team really I don't think ever got the credit they deserve but in my booking I would feature Tojo or Fargo or myself when I wrestled or the fabulous ones and in between every program I would do something with Eddie and Tommy and they would be that bridge between one hot program and the next one and so I guess they are the most underrated. Um, the most overrated, probably, I love him as a person, but the world has taken the Andy Kaufman uh, program and blown it, I think, way out of proportion. And if you could rewrite one of your uh, regrets in the wrestling business, what would it be? I think I know the answer to this one after the interview. Yeah, probably getting involved with TNA. Yeah. And any thoughts on Mark Canterbury, who, th who started with you? I think he was Henry Godwin in WWE. Mark Canterbury. He had a farmer gimmick in WWE. Uh, don't um, bring him back. Maybe the fan has it wrong there. Um, did you ever meet Art Barr, who played Beetlejuice in WCW? No. no, that was Jeff. Oh, that was Jeff that had a run with in Mexico? Yeah, or, I know. think in WCW. Oh, really? Interesting. All right, well, we appreciate the tour very much. And uh, is there anything you want to say to close the tour off of your house? No, I appreciate you, and you are always welcome. I'd be glad to join you on any interviews on the phone or podcast or if you have any questions or if your fans have any questions, uh, you, you got my number, you can call me and we will talk about it. I guess the fan just responded back here that uh, Henry Godwin was Tex Slasinger. Does that oh, ring a bell? Yes. Isn't that awful? Uh, yes. Good talent. Uh, we had a lot of fun with him in here. I had forgotten he became a different character in WWE. All right. Well, thank you very much. And everyone can check out your podcast, which is Booking Memphis Wrestling, if they search it. Yes, Booking Memphis Wrestling with Jared Jarrett. And the last question that I'll say from the fan is Chris Candido. Thoughts on him and Sonny? Uh, yes, Chris uh, helped us at TNA, um, Sonny was a, was a great talent. Um, I didn't get to work with Chris as much as I would have liked to. Was their relationship always a strange one over the years? Well, they had their ups and downs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks again. We're gonna close this off, and thanks from the fans here. They appreciate it, they said. Okay.